I would be interested in cash versus gold versus equity investments just now with market turbulence and what split would you suggest? Now, I wouldn't suggest one because obviously I can't give people advice, but the performance, later on somebody also asked the question, the perform, they wanted to know the performance of gold versus equity markets versus cash during this period. And I've actually, pulled, actually before this produced a chart that uh, shows those performance numbers. And what we have, you, you'll see that, for example, the FTSE 100 year to date is down about 24%. If you look at the, uh, the S&P 500, it's down in double digits. It's less, it's not down as much as the uh, FTSE 100. I think it's about sort of 14, 15%. It depends which day you look at because we've had a very strong rally. The thing there is, like I mentioned in the previous answer, the global overseas holdings will have had a boost from fall in the value of the pound. So that's why some of the overseas markets have done better than the FTSE 100. But the FTSE 100 does also have quite a big exposure to um, oil companies as well, which obviously the price of oil has fallen 70% year to date. Now, cash has obviously performed well, because if you've got your money in cash, it hasn't fallen. And therefore, at this point in time, you're still winning. Uh, bonds have also done well. If you look at gilt funds, you'd have probably been up about um, 10%, I think it is year to date. And gold, you'll be up even more. I think you're up about 14% year to date. So these are haven assets that have performed well when the market has tumbled. It doesn't mean they haven't fallen along the way. We've seen periods of uh, forced liquidation by hedge funds around the world, which caused the price of gold and the price of bonds to fall. But what it does highlight is that even though there can be a bear market in equities, the investment world is made up of lots of assets. So there are bull markets in gold and there are bull markets in US treasuries and um, certain parts of the, the bond market. So there are places where you could can invest and be making money even through periods that we've had. Now, the question about how much gold you should have is an interesting one. About a, a, a year or two ago, I did a whole research piece on AG20 Investor around the idea of gold, because you see a lot of stuff in the press that says buy gold, hold gold, it's, it's a hedge against inflation. It seems the way they talk about it, it's a hedge against everything, and it's not. The problem with gold is, um, as Warren Buffett once said, is basically if you buy it, it's normally bought in periods of fear by people, and you're hoping that somebody further down the line is going to be more fearful for you than you are at that point and pay you a higher price for it. Because gold in itself doesn't actually do a lot. It doesn't produce an income as a, a, a metal. It's not used uh, massively in production. It is to a point, I know it's, there are some uses for it in gold, for gold, but when it comes to investing, a lot of the demand is driven by people who go into it as a, as a haven asset. The problem is with gold is that if you look at the chart for gold and the gold price, so if you go on to Google, just Google the um, gold spot price and you can find it on things like Bloomberg, you will see that the price of gold is incredibly volatile. It goes up and down almost like a, the stock market. And so as a hedge against volatility, it doesn't work in in the way you might think because the more gold you have in a portfolio there comes a point as you keep adding gold that you actually start to increase the volatility of your portfolio so it isn't a hedge against volatility at all so yes in periods that we've had now when there's mass fear and it's a real extreme fear gold does well but there, it is volatile um gold does if you put it in a portfolio help to reduce the size of your maximum losses to a point but again if you hold too much then it starts to increase them when you did the numbers i crunched portfolio numbers and did it for different percentages of gold and if you had five percent ten percent all the way up to like 50 60 see what would happen and it worked out that if you hold more than five to ten percent of your portfolio in gold then you start to increase the frequency of your losses and and also the frequency of your your gains but what it means is your volatility starts to go up so it can start to be counterproductive because we have seen some wild swings in the in the price of gold so if people want to buy gold then i think some of the conventional wisdoms out there of only holding five ten percent 
have actually got a grain of, of truth in them. So uh, I, I can't say whether you should or it's, it's down to you whether you buy gold, but just bear their things, uh, those things in mind.